Netflix is the world's leading internet entertainment service with 139 million paid memberships in over 190 countries, enjoying TV series, documentaries, and feature films across a wide variety of genres and languages. How did something so new become the world's leading interest entertainment service so quickly? Netflix.com debuted in 1998 and allowed members to watch unlimited DVD rentals for a small price per month. Then in 2007, they introduced streaming, which allowed members to watch their favorite TV shows at their leisure. This increased popularity by a lot. By 2018, Netflix had won multiple Oscars and they now have their own movies and TV shows. According to a functionalist perspective, you must have shared symbols in order for something to be popular, popular culture. This very much applies to Netflix because the movies and TV shows would not be successful if multiple people didn't enjoy them. Part of this assignment is to explain this piece of popular culture to a different generation. This generation I am talking to is millennials, so I talked to my sister, who is 34, which makes her a millennial. I asked her what her form of Netflix was when she was my age. She responded with VHS and Blockbuster. She said if you wanted to watch a movie at home, you waited until it came out, and then you walked down to Blockbuster and rented it. I also asked her how she felt about Netflix, and here is her response. I have mixed feelings about these new forms of pop culture. It makes it a lot easier to access movies, shows, documentaries, etc. I especially appreciate the convenience since I have kids, but with all the different programs out there to make it so easy to sit in front of your TV, I think it has really changed the younger generation to become screen obsessed. Also, I have noticed the accessibility of everything basically being at their fingertips. There is a sense of needing what they want now. There is no patience or understanding that they, can, they can't have it immediately. Also, instead of going out and playing and socializing face-to-face, -face, this new generation would prefer to sit at home and either watch media forms like Netflix or engage and play with strangers on the computer. I feel, I sometimes feel all these new forms of media are making a larger negative impact than just making it simply easier to access shows slash movies. Although she finds Netflix to be very convenient, she doesn't exactly believe what, she, what it stands for. So Millennial's form of Netflix was Blockbuster, which is sadly no longer in business. Blockbuster was just a regular video store, but instead of it being at the touch of your fingertips, you actually had to walk slash drive down to the store. You could buy movies or just rent them at Blockbuster, but if you rented, you obviously had to bring it back a few days later. Unfortunately, though, if you rented a movie and missed the return date, you got charged with a late fee. Netflix offered the same luxury of having access to hundreds of different movies, except with Netflix, you could pay a monthly fee and watch as many of those movies as you wanted. As long as you kept up with your payments, the world was your oyster. Netflix has created a business model around the idea that consumers want convenience and selection more than they want to be able to make an impulse decision. Their business ideas had more success than blockbusters, which focus more on the movie night crowd who want a new release movie right away. Netflix fits nicely into the interaction approach to popular culture. In his book, Mix It Up, Popular Culture, Mass Media, and Society, Grazian emphasizes how the interaction approach also considers the influence of one's friends, neighbors, parents, and almost any relationships of the like on the distribution and adaptation of trends within popular culture, such as Netflix. Since the interaction approach looks at, spread looks at the spreading of popular culture, such as, such as word of mouth, picture sharing, and online interaction, it is easy to see how the spread of Netflix trend fits into this approach. I usually hear which Netflix shows slash movies are good for my friends or family, and then I end up watching them and recommend them to someone else, and so on. Netflix is, almost, is also very much considered popular culture considering a functionalist perspective. Functionalists believe that in order to have functional things in society, we have to have a shared set of symbols and images that mean the same or similar things to all of us. The entire Netflix site is filled with common interest and shared symbols. Netflix would not put something on there that only one person would enjoy. The idea is to please as many people as they can. Also, the idea of collective effervescence, which is also a functionalist idea, definitely applies. It allows people to watch together and all get the feeling of happiness or sadness or any other number of emotions together. It unites people and allows us to share these experiences. Deviance is another functionalist idea. 
They believe that deviance is needed for development, maintenance, and change of society. One could say that Netflix is deviant considering it encourages people to sit down and watch TV all day. And despite that, it is still very much functional and extremely successful. Why, doesn't it, why does it function, you may ask? That's easy, because it's popular. It's so convenient and easy, that, and that is what everyone wants. People don't want things to be hard anymore. We don't care if, it fit, if it's more rewarding to work for something. Most people just want a quick and easy alternative. That's exactly what Netflix represents, quick and easy entertainment. There are very little people who would turn something like that down.